the ability to work with and manipulate strings in VBA is a core element of development. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today in this VBA basic training, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know about string manipulation and how you can work with them in VBA. And I'm gonna include this incredible cheat sheet to help you along the way. So we're gonna get started right away on this training. If you do like these trainings, don't forget, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe, click the notification icon, and don't forget to comment below as I respond to each and every comment. These trainings are for you. I do create these both comprehensive application development every single Tuesday and VBA basic training every single Saturday. So I'm happy to hear your ideas, feedback, and everything else. Go ahead and put that in the comments or feel free to email me at randy at excel for freelancers.com. You can support this channel some great ways, even with our Patreon, where I bring you additional trainings each and every week based on your ideas, feedback, and comments. Patreon is a great way to support this channel for just a few dollars a month and get a ton of value in return. So check that out. I'll include the links down below. All right, let's get started on this training. String manipulation in VBA is what we're going to be working with. How do we take a string and turn it around? In fact, String manipulation is something that I've probably done in almost every single application that I've ever developed. In some sort of a way, I've had to manipulate strings. And so it's a really core feature and a core skill that you'll want to do when developing these applications. It's something that you will want to understand and be able to work with it. Because when you do work with it, you're able to open up your abilities and create really fantastic applications and create code in a lot less time and of course get a lot better results so let's get into it right away we're going to go into the vba we'll go into the developers and we'll click on the visual basic now if you don't have the visual basic you can click alt f11 or you can just simply right click customize the ribbon and go ahead and make sure the developer is selected we're going to go into the developers of vba visual basic editor and you're going to have something like this we want to work within a module so what we're going to do is we're going to right click anywhere or simply click insert here and we're going to insert a module we're also going to be working with the immediate window in fact i just had a training on the immediate window so that'll be coming soon or already is there depending upon what order i create these videos and post them go ahead and make sure you want to view the immediate to do that you can use Control g or select here that's going to view the immediate window so the first thing we're going to start writing some macros one fundamental is we want to know the length of a string and that's kind of important especially as a core skill in working with strings so let's write our first subroutine just on that we'll call this length function and inside this length function what i want to do is just dimension a variable we'll just call it string as a string and inside that we'll just populate that variable with a string called hello world now maybe i want to know the length of that string and that is going to include all the letters and the spaces or all the characters we're going to use the immediate window so we're going to write in debug.print and i want to know the length so i'm going to use the length function and if we take a look at that it's waiting for that expression and we can simply put in the variable here and we can get an output when we run that macro it's going to tell us that there are 11 characters inside that string and that's a very easy function to use and it's going to help us work with other functions too especially when combined we can also combine strings together we can concatenate them and so we can write something like sub string and then concatenate and to do that we can also dimension let's say our first name as a string and we'll do last name as string. And now we're gonna populate those variables. So first name is gonna be equal to John. And the last name is equal to Doe. And this is pretty self-explanatory because it's simply combining the two names into a single string. And when there's really no function to do that, it's just simply combining them, even though we could use a function, but it's not necessary in this. So we're gonna do first, name and simply using the and and then we'll add a space in there and then another and and then the last name so without a function it's simply combining them using the and statement so the and will combine strings let's clear our 11 here and what we're going to do is we're going to run our macro play or f5 as a shortcut and we see that it has combined both the first name and the last name into a single string of John Doe. That's great. And oftentimes we want to get some part of the string, right? We want to extract a portion of the string, maybe the left portion or the right portion. There is a function for that and we're going to call it left. So the first thing what I want to do is get information about the left part of string. So we're going to use left 
function. And we want to sample on that. So we're going to dimension the string as a string variable as we're working with strings. And the string is going to be equal to hello world. Once we have that, I want to again use the debug.print. And this time what I want to do is I want to get a left portion of the string. So we're going to use the left function. And if we see the parameters here, we have the string and the length. So what is the string and the length? So let's say I go and put in our string variable and I want to pull in, let's say just the first five characters of that. And that's exactly what I want. So let's say I only want the word hello. I only want to get the first five characters. So when we run that, we see that we have just hello here and that's all we've done. So we've taken the string and we've extracted the first five characters of the string. We also have the write function. Write can be really powerful too. So sub write function and I'll make sure to include all these macros so you can download this for free using the links down in the description along with the cheat sheet. So again, once again, we are going to dimension the string as a string. So we'll copy and paste that. And this time our string is also going to be hello world. So we can copy and paste that. However, we're going to use the write function. So we're going to use debug.print. And this time I want to use the write. Now the write is also the string and the length of it. So let's say I want the write portion. So it's going to go back from the end and count backwards in this case. So the write function is going to be the string. And let's say we want five here as well. So we can do that. And then what's that going to put out? So we can simply run that macro and we see that the world, it's going to count backwards five characters, one, two, three, four, five, and the result is going to be world. So we can use the right function to extract the right part of the string. We can also get the middle part. Maybe we want a mid section of the string and we can do that using the mid function. So let's write another subroutine. We're going to call this mid function. And the mid function has several parameters. So once again, we are going to dimension our string and we're going to write in hello world as we have done before. But this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to use debug.print and we're going to use the mid function. And the mid function, we have the string, we have the starting point, and then we have the length. So we're going to do the string. And then maybe we want to start it at, let's say the second character here. And then we want to know what is the length. So maybe we want to put in just three letters. So we're going to take a look at that. So it's starting the second position and it's going to return the three characters. So when we run that, we see that we have, let's get rid of that. We see we have ELL. -L. So ELL. -L. And here we see that it's starting at the second position and it is going to return the three characters on the mid and that's all it's going to return. So the mid function is also something powerful that I use quite often. We can also compare strings. String compare is also a very powerful feature. So we can do something like substring compare. And here what we want to do is we can have two strings. So we'll do dimension string one as a string and then we'll do string two as a string as well. So we have two strings. Now we need to define those. So string one is going to be equal to let's say apple. We'll do this in lowercase and then we'll do string two is going to be equal. We'll use the uppercase for the apple. So we want to be able to compare those two strings. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to do debug.print. And so we can write in our string compare. So str and then comp. Then we have string one, string two, and then the type of comparison that we want to do. So we're going to write in string one, and then we're going to compare that with string two. And what type of compare? We have binary compare, we have a database compare, and we have a text compare. Now the text compare is not case sensitive. So when we use that, it's simply comparing the two texts. If it outputs to zero, that means there is no difference. So let's take a quick look at that and run it. Let's clear this out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to run it. So that is zero. So now if I change that to apples, I just want to show you the difference. It's gonna show one, one meaning there's a difference, zero meaning there's no difference between the text. That's great for being able to compare two different texts to see if they have different characters. What if they're case sensitive? We can also do that. So let's copy this here and we'll put this down here. But instead of doing VB text compare, let's do VB binary compare. Now the binary compare is case sensitive. So let's take a quick look at that and let's comment this one out just so we don't get confused. And then we'll go ahead and write this down and we see it as a one. So we see that it's showing a difference. Now, just so we understand the difference, if I change them both to exactly the same, 
we're going to get a result of zero. So we can use the binary compare to compare the differences between our upper and lower case letters so that it is case sensitive. So it's a great way when you want to compare two strings. If they match the characters, we'll use VB test compare. If we want to determine if they're different cases, we can use VB binary compare. Great. So that's great for string comparison. But what about if we want to use the in string function? Something that I've used in almost every single training is the in string. So let's do that sub in string function. So let's go ahead. Now, in string is going to help us determine what position inside the string, and it is going to return a long variable, a number. So what we're going to do again, once again, we are going to dimension our string as a string because it's going to be a string. And next up, we'll use the hello world again. Hello world. So inside this, what I would like to know, debug dot print, I want to know where is the O found. So we're going to use in string and I want the starting point of the string. Now this is optional. So we see that the brackets around it. So if it's not included, it will consider to start at the beginning of the string or we can put one, which is fine, but it will consider that automatically. What is the string? We can put in the string here. And what are we looking for? I'm looking for the O and I want to know its position. So here it's going to tell us the position of the O. So when we run that macro, we see that it is in the fifth position. And why is that? We're using hello. Notice that there's two O's here. It's going to find the first one. When I use in string, it's going to find the first one from left to right. But what if I want to find the last one? How do I do that? Well, we can use what's called in string reverse sub in string reverse function. And it's going to be very similar. So let's just copy and paste what we have here. And we're going to make some modifications. So I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of using the in string, I'm going to use reverse. So let's take a quick look at the parameters on that in string reverse. Here is the string. We want the string. So we'll do string. And then what we want to do is we want to know the match. Where are we looking? I'm looking at zero. So that's all that is required. Excuse me. Oh, not zero. And so what it's going to do is going to start at the end in in string verse and go backwards. And it's going to look for that. So what it's going to return is the position of the last O in this case. So let's go ahead and clear the results out. We're going to run the macro. And you see now it's eight. It is the eighth position. So it's skipping this. And it's looking for last. So it's starting the backwards. It's telling us that the last O is in the eighth position. So in string reverse can be quite helpful, especially when we're working with strings with file names and we want to look for the file extension. That's a good one. And sometimes the file name can include periods. So we would use the in string reverse to find the extension, which is the last period in a full file name. So that can be very, very helpful, especially when working with file paths and we want to extract the extensions. So that's in string reverse. We can also use the replacement function if we want to replace parts of a string. So here we can do replace function. And once again, we're going to dimension the string as a string and we'll do hello world. So we can simply copy that. And maybe we want to replace a portion of the string with something else. So we can do debug dot print and then we're going to use the replace. So the first part is replaces. What is the expression of the string? What are we looking for? And then what are we replacing it with? So a string is what we have. That's the string. What are we looking for? So we're going to look for world and maybe we want to replace it with VBA. Great. So here it's going to look for the word world. And so our results should be hello VBA. So when we run that macro, we see that we have hello VBA as a result. So it's looking for the world inside this string and wherever it's found, it's going to replace it with VBA. Replace is something that I use extremely often. So it is a good function to learn. We can also use trim when we have extra spaces that we don't want. And this is especially helpful when people working with passwords or something where you don't necessarily see a space. It can be very, very helpful. So we're going to use the trim function. So trim function and basically the trim function removes trailing and starting spaces in a string. So let's do this. We will copy and paste this. But we're going to add some spaces onto that. So I'm going to add three spaces in the beginning and I'm going to add three spaces at the end. And now we are going to simply write debug dot print and we're going to use the trim function. So the properties of the trim are simply the string that we're going to enter and it's going to remove both the preceding and trailing spaces. So we can clear this out. And now what we can do is we can run our macro and we see that we've got hello world without any spaces. We can also trim the spaces before or after a string as well. So let's do that. Let's copy that here. And this time what I'm going to use is L trim, which is the left. So we're going to do sub L trim 
function. So we want a sample. I'm going to paste this in here. We can do both the L trim and the right trim. So we'll do L trim and R trim in both. So let's do that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use debug dot print and then we want the L trim of the string. And now let's do one more debug print and then R trim of the string. Great. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outputs and see exactly what we have got. So we're going to run this and we just run the macro here and we see that our first one L trim has removed all of the spaces before. However, the spaces after remain. And in the second sample, all the before spaces still remain. However, the trailing spaces have been removed. So the right trim removes the spaces on the right side while the L trim removes the spaces before the string. Very, very good. So those are some two nice samples here. We can also do some case conversions. If we want to convert cases in a string, we can do that as well. So sub case conversion example. So now we can also do this in our case conversions. So let's go ahead and copy this here so that we have it. I'll just use this one right here. We'll use the standard string that we've been working with, but we want to maybe convert some of the cases on that. So how would we do that? Well, the first one is we can use the uppercase if we want to make them all uppercase. So we can use debug dot print. We would use the U case for that. So the U case simply takes the string and makes them all uppercase. The second one I want to share with you is L case, which makes them all lowercase. And then we just use L case here and then the string variable. So what that's going to do is going to take hello world. It's going to first convert them all to capital and then it's going to be all lowercase. So when we run that macro, we see that we have them all in capital and then all in lowercase. So L case and U case are very helpful when using that. We can also process text in a larger sample. So let's put a few of these things together and we can see what we can do. Process text example. So now we're going to combine a few of them and have a look to see how they can be helpful. Going to mention the text as a string. Let's do use text is equal to and then we'll do some spaces and then hello. Let's do VBA world. Combine a few things. So now the first thing what we want to do is we want to trim the spaces. So the text is going to equal to trim and then text here. So first we're removing both the trailing and preceding spaces. Next up, what I would like to do is I'd like to use the replace statement. So we're going to say the text is equal to the replace. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that text and I want to look for VBA and I want to replace it with the word Excel. So we can use Excel. So it's going to take that and remove that. Oops, let's fix that variable here. Next up, what I would also like to do is to make it all uppercase. So we're going to use text equals U case and then we're going to take the text. So now it makes it all uppercase. Okay, very good. So once I have that, I want to see what the result is. So we're going to use debug dot print and then text. We can clear out what we have so far and we could run the macro. So let's go ahead and go step by step inside this. We can use our step through here, step into or F8. So as we move through the macro, we see that the string contains all the spaces just as we have. As we trim it, we see that the spaces are gone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we see now instead of hello vba world it says hello text because we use the replace to replace it next up we're going to make them all uppercase so we can see now that it's all uppercase and when we debug it's hello excel world so we've used several examples here how we can work and manipulate strings and string variables within excel vba a very powerful tool for programming i hope you do like this video make sure you download this particular cheat sheet which will help you if you want more macros done for you i've got an incredible 500 vba library that's the ultimate developers vba library it allows you to quickly search for any type of macro that you want and that's been a great great start and i put all of my best macros inside that so if you're looking to complete applications in one tenth the time that definitely is the product that you want i'll include the link down below thank you so much for your continued support and we'll see you next week